In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the camera imager settings when rendering with Octane for Cinema 4D. So for this video, I'm using the RV Ship 01.C4D scene. And I'm currently rendering with Camera 1 camera. So let's go here to the outline, select Camera 1, and let's add a tag, C4D Octane tag. We'll use an Octane camera tag. And we have a camera imager options here. And if I turn on enable camera imager, we get a whole bunch of settings here that we can start to work with. And what's nice about these settings is we can adjust them and it will, will not require Octane to start re-rendering the scene. So you can adjust these while Octane is rendering as well. So we have exposure, highlight compression, which is good when you have very blown out highlights. It's a little bit subtle, but if you take a look at this pipe right here, as I increase the highlight compression, it kind of reduces that kind of blown out look that we're getting. Also here in the uh, HDR image, you can see it's a little bit less blown out. We have camera responses that we can use. So a bunch of presets here for a variety of different camera types. And then of course we can also set this to a strictly linear workflow. If we go all the way down here, we can choose linear or sRGB. You can also adjust the uh, gamma, obviously. Let me set this back to one. And we can also link to a custom lookup table, which is very helpful, especially if you're going to be doing um, compositing as part of a team on a project and everybody's using the same lookup table. So that's kind of useful. We can adjust the white point. So let's say if I bring this to a warmer color and choose OK, we get a little bit of a cooler output. Vignetting allows us to sort of add a little bit of darkening around the edges. So we can do that here in camera as opposed to adding it in post. And then, of course, saturation is fairly self-explanatory. I think probably the most important setting in the camera imagers is this hot pixel removal. So you can see as we're rendering here, we get a fair number of fireflies, these little bright highlights down here. So uh, we can use hot pixel removal to start to remove them. You see how they disappear as I bring this down. So. There are other ways, of course, to additionally reduce the noise in the render, but this is one option you can always try. The only thing uh, you want to be careful of is if you make this too low, it's going to make the image somewhat soft. So you want to find that point where it reduces the, uh, the fireflies just enough, but doesn't get too soft. And of course, use other things found in the kernel settings, such as adaptive sampling and so on, to reduce noise in the scene. But that is definitely an option you can uh, pay attention to. So other options that are useful when you're rendering for compositing, pre-multiplied alpha and disable partial alpha. Uh, let's take a look in the settings here. I'm gonna turn on uh, alpha channel and then go in here and choose alpha. And if I turn on disable partial alpha, you can sort of see the result right here. So it's, it's giving us a fair amount of bleed there. Um, so it's taking the uh, pixels that are are partially transparent and making them fully opaque. Let's go turn off the alpha channel and go back to rendering uh, color or let's say direct light. The saturate to white uh, option, you can see some of these areas that are very saturated where we have bright lights. If I bring this up, we get it starts to desaturate them. Dithering helps remove banding in very large, smooth areas. The minimum display samples adjust the number of samples that are calculated before the image is displayed. So this can be uh, this can reduce noise when navigating around the scene. But you can see it also kind of slows it down a little bit. So it's not going to update the render until it reaches that minimum samples of 32. So if I bring this down, it speeds it up, but we also have a little bit more of a noisy um, interaction there. So you could always increase this a little bit 
and then you get a little bit less noise as you're moving around. And then we have tone map intervals, which is useful when uh, compositing and tone mapping. So that's the basics of using the camera imager in Octane for Cinema 4D.